Hello guys and welcome to my review of Airborne Kingdom. It's one of the best city building games I've played in some time and if you're even remotely interested in the city builder genre, I really do recommend checking it out. Why? Well, I'm about to show you. This is a rundown of features you need to know about. You'll see some stuff that will surprise you and one or two things you didn't expect. Like what happens when you go full tilt. Never go full tilt. Hey, I make the bad decisions so you don't have to. Let's crack on with our Airborne Kingdom review. Just before I begin though guys, drop a quick like on the video. Your likes keep me flying high. And without them, I would crash and burn. Okay, so what is Airborne Kingdom? It's a new city building game from developer A Wandering Band. A city building game with a twist. That twist is your mobile. Being mobile adds an exploration mechanic. Whereas conventional city builders route you to the spot, here you're roaming around a randomly generated overworld. And there are a few reasons you'll want to do so. The first is to find resources. Coal is the most important one. It keeps you airborne. And without it, you're no better than a common land town. So sick of land towns. Food and water keep your citizens happy and indeed alive. Wood is used for crafting buildings and then there are the slightly less vital resources like clay and quartz. They'll help you make more advanced stuff like street lamps and propulsion systems. More on those later. The second reason to explore is to discover other settlements. They'll give you quests and upon completion you'll form an alliance with them. The end goal is to form alliances with settlements all over the land and make the ultimate airborne kingdom. One with loads of wings and stuff. It's a lofty ambition and that is the last air-based pun I'll be making in this video, thank god. Here's an example of a quest. One settlement might ask you to go and discover a far-off landmark. When you do, fly back and tell them about it and they'll ask you for one final favour, usually to build some sort of monument or contraption. When that's done, they'll like you and you can consider them a BFFF. Best flying friend forever. You can also trade with settlements, use them to get a resource you're running low on, or even better, buy blueprints off them. Blueprints are the way you build exciting new things, like a glass smelter that lets us build lights, which boosts the happiness of our residents. New people will only join when the general happiness level is high, so you need to make sure your kingdom has a lot of what I believe city councils call good vibes. It's essential drinking some tea. You expand your kingdom by recruiting more people. You'll find them in cities and settlements. As long as you've got enough happiness and houses, they'll join you. Just drop their family and go and live amongst the clouds. Along with harvesting coal to keep the generators powered and grabbing wood to build with, it's fairly straightforward city building stuff. But it's the stuff that's unique to Airborne Kingdom that will really grab you. The lift mechanic is a great example. The more you build, the heavier your kingdom becomes. That means you have to compensate for the bigger loads with wings and propellers. It's not enough to just slap a few of them on and call it a day. You have to consider the balance of your kingdom. Too much tilt makes residents unhappy. Hey, I'd be unhappy too if my breakfast kept sliding off the table. I've not seen this in a city building game before. It kind of makes you think about the layout in three dimensional terms and I like it. You also have to think about speed. Getting anywhere in the early game takes ages. So if you want to speed things up a little, research faster travel using the academy and invest in sky ores you'll soar through the air like a military jet. A military jet with hundreds of people living on it. Weird to consider. Another thing setting Airborne Kingdom apart is its open-ended design. You've got a lot of choice when it comes to building your kingdom. You might build a long, narrow city with wings, or stack buildings on top of each other and make a more vertical kingdom. Like, um, you know, if a skyscraper had a baby with a helicopter coming across certain locations in the world, even unlocks new paint schemes. You really can make the place your own. I'm quite into this lovely copper aesthetic. Makes all the roofs really nice and shiny. This results in Airborne Kingdom 
being more of a gentle, even therapeutic, city-building game. If you're looking for a tough challenge, look elsewhere. There are no enemies to watch out for, no hazards to avoid, and not even a difficulty slider. The most tension I'm ever under is when I plot a course to a distant marker without having enough food or water reserves. This forces some of my inhabitants to jump ship. They don't die, they just get hungry and leave. It's kind of telling that, even in a game set in the most precarious environment imaginable, there's still the total absence of death. People don't die here, they just go home. And you know what, it's much less stressful that way. Kingdom is a lovely, laid-back city-building game with a wonderful little skybound twist. This isn't the sort of game you'd sit down and try to work out optimal build orders, you know, like in, say, Frostpunk, but there's definite room for replay value in the different sorts of ways you can make your kingdom look. It's not massively deep or long, lasting around 10 hours or so, but it's forgiving, it's nice to look at, and it's a unique twist on a popular genre. And that's why I think Airborne Kingdom is one of the best city builders of the year. You'll find Airborne Kingdom on the Epic Store. It's out now. I hope you enjoyed my review of Airborne Kingdom. If you did, leave a like on the video. And hey, subscribe to my channel, Gaming with Griff Griffin. See you later.